it's really trendy right now to say, your feelings are valid. But most people don't really know what that means or even what to do with that information. Validation is the recognition that somebody's feelings are legitimate. It means that if we were to put ourselves in their shoes, we would understand why they might think or feel a certain way. Feelings are always valid. However, they are not always accurate. Feelings are not factual. They're interpretive. Feelings are just a physiological product of our perceived experience. People come to therapy for many different reasons, but usually, in essence, it kind of boils down to a difficulty with negative emotion, whatever that looks or feels like in their life. In order to be mentally healthy, validation of those difficult feelings is not enough. It's a good start, but therapists need more tools than just validation to effectively help people. Hello everyone, my name is Tia and I'm a licensed psychotherapist. I make videos that offer tips on how to improve your relationship with yourself and with other people. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you never miss more tips from a therapist. Today, we're talking about how mental health requires more than just validation. People need to be told that feeling helpless is not the same thing as being helpless. That feeling like we can't do something does not actually mean that we can't do that thing. Some of the skills that you should learn in therapy involve learning how to notice when feelings arise and understanding where those came from and processing what does that actually mean and then decide how to move forward in reality. Unfortunately, when therapists overuse that tool of validation, they miss that last necessary bit of helping their clients decide how they want to move forward in their reality. Therapists need to move beyond just validating emotion and start validating that person's agency, their power to make change in their life. Because when people struggle with overwhelming negative emotion, they forget that they have the power to make those changes. Validating the negative feelings too much negatively impacts the client's self-perception of who they are and what they're capable of doing. A great therapist needs to have one foot in validating the emotions of where somebody is now and another foot in the future that the client is actively trying to create for themselves. Emotional validation is important but so is encouraging agency and courage and resilience by inviting and preparing clients to take voluntary steps outside of their comfort and their coping and towards their growth and empowerment. We need both types of validation in order to be healthy. That includes high support with high standards of personal responsibility. Otherwise, people get stuck with victim mentality. And we don't do that around here. No, no, we don't do that. No. Mm -mm. We do not believe in forever victims. What was not your choice in the past is your choice now. And that's what we're building on. Generally speaking, here is how therapy should progress. The more a therapist understands you, the more likely they're able to help you. Beginning by understanding the journey that led you into therapy in the first place and validating the feelings based on that lived experience. Then, therapy should progress into reminding you that your emotions are not facts. It should consist of validating your personal agency and supporting you as you build competence, doing things that you haven't done before to manage those negative emotions. The therapist is then able to witness and validate that earned sense of confidence. As you become a more evolved version of yourself, the therapist then reflects who you're becoming as your new normal beyond who you were before you first came to therapy. With this evolution comes a new vision of the future where clients can go beyond just themselves and become a great resource and support for others in a healthy way. The proper progression of therapy is empowerment, not victimization. You should not feel like a victim after every therapy session. On your search for a therapist for yourself or someone else, 
look for one that goes beyond emotional validation. And that can be kind of hard to tell uh, before you officially get started. So if the therapist offers an initial consultation before beginning treatment, ask them how they've helped someone like you and see if you like their answer. And if you're more than four sessions in with this therapist and you are not making traction towards progress, that could be a sign that it's time to break up with your therapist and look for a better fit. What are your tips on how to find a great therapist? Let us know in the comment section below and let's help each other out. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.